concept, which can be composed together to generate new symbols that represent new concepts. Bliss symbols differ from most of the world's major writing systems in that the characters do not correspond at all to the sounds of any spoken language. Bliss symbols was published by Charles K. Bliss in 1949 and found use in the education of people with communication difficulties. Bliss symbols was invented by Charles K. Bliss, born Karl Kaziel Blitz in the Austro-Hungarian city of Chernowitz, which had a mixture of different nationalities that hated each other, mainly because they spoke and thought in different languages. Bliss graduated as a chemical engineer at the Vienna University of Technology and joined an electronics company as a research chemist. After the annexation of Austria into Nazi Germany in 1938, Bliss, a Jew, was sent to the concentration camps of Dachau and Buchenwald. His German wife Claire managed to get him released, and they finally became exiles in Shanghai, where Bliss had a cousin. Bliss devised Bliss symbols while a refugee at the Shanghai Ghetto in Sydney, from 1942 to 1949. He wanted to create an easy-to-learn international auxiliary language to allow communication between different linguistic communities. He was inspired by Chinese characters, with which he became familiar at Shanghai. Bliss's system was explained in his work Semantography It had several names, in 1942 I named my symbols World Writing. Then chose in 1947 an international scientific term Semantography. My friends argued that it is customary to name new writing systems after the inventors. Bliss Symbolics, or Bliss Symbols, or simply Bliss. As the tourist explosion took place in the 1960s, a number of researchers were looking for new standard symbols to be used at roads, stations, airports, etc. Bliss then adopted the name Bliss Symbolics in order that no researcher could plagiarize his system of symbols. Since the 1960s-1970s, Bliss symbols have become popular as a method to teach disabled people to communicate. In 1971 Shirley McNaughton started a pioneer program at the Ontario Crippled Children's Centre, aimed at children with cerebral palsy, from the approach of augmentative and alternative communication. According to Erica Okrin, Bliss used to complain about the way the teachers at the OCCC were using the symbols, in relation with the proportions of the symbols and other questions, for example. They used fancy terms like nouns and verbs, to describe what Bliss called things and actions. Dot. The ultimate objective of the OCCC program was to use Bliss symbols as a practical way to teach the children to express themselves in their mother tongue. Since the Bliss symbols provided visual keys to understand the meaning of the English words, especially the abstract words. In his work Semantography Bliss had not provided a systematic set of definitions for his symbols. So McNaughton's team might often interpret a certain symbol in a way that Bliss would later criticize as a misinterpretation. For example, they might interpret a tomato as a vegetable according to the English definition of tomato, even though the ideal Bliss symbol of vegetable was restricted by Bliss to just vegetables growing underground. Eventually the OCCC staff modified and adapted Bliss's system in order to make it serve as a bridge to English. Bliss complaints about his symbols being abused by the OCCC became so intense that the director of the OCCC told Bliss, on his 1974 visit, never to come back. In spite of this, in 1975 Bliss granted an exclusive world license, for use with disabled children, to the new Bliss Symbolics Communication Foundation directed by Shirley McNaughton. Nevertheless, in 1977 Bliss claimed that this agreement was violated so that he was deprived of effective control of his symbol system. According to Okrin, there was a final period of conflict, as Bliss would make continuous criticisms to McNaughton often followed by apologies. Bliss finally brought his lawyers back to the OCCC, and both parts reached a settlement. In 1982, the OCCC got an exclusive, non-cancelable, and perpetual license to use Bliss symbolics, and he, Bliss, got $160,000. Easter Seals, the charitable foundation, paid the settlement. Bliss spent the money on a big publication run of his own Bliss Symbols teaching manual. Bliss Symbolic Communication International now claims an exclusive license from Bliss, for the use and publication of Bliss Symbols for persons with communication, language, and learning difficulties. The Bliss Symbol method has been used in Canada, Sweden, and a few other countries. Practitioners of Bliss Symbolics maintain that some users who have learned to communicate with Bliss Symbolics find it easier to learn to read and write traditional orthography in the local spoken language than do users who did not know Bliss Symbolics. Unlike similar constructed languages like AWI, Bliss Symbolics was conceived as a purely visual, speechless language, on the premise that interlinguistic communication is mainly carried on by reading and writing. Nevertheless, 
Bliss suggested that a set of international words could be adopted, so that a kind of spoken language could be established, as a traveling aid only. Dot. Whether Bliss symbolics constitutes an unspoken language is a controversial question, whatever its practical utility may be. Some linguists, such as John de Francis and J. Marshall Unger have argued that genuine ideographic writing systems with the same capacities as natural languages do not exist. Bliss' concern about semantics finds an early reference in John Locke, whose essay concerning human understanding prevented people from those vague and insignificant forms of speech that may give the impression of being deep learning. Another vital reference is Leibniz's project of an ideographic language called universal character, based on the principles of Chinese characters. It would contain small figures representing visible things by their lines, and the invisible, by the visible which accompany them, as well as adding certain additional marks, suitable to make understood the flexions and the particles. Bliss stated that his own work was an attempt to take up the thread of Leibniz's project. Finally there is a strong influence by the work The Meaning of Meaning by C. K. Ogden and I. A. Richards, which was considered a standard work on semantics. Bliss found especially useful their triangle of reference, the physical thing or referent that we perceive would be represented at the right vertex, the meaning that we know by experience. At the top vertex, and the physical word that we speak or symbol we write, at the left vertex. The reversed process would happen when we read or listen to words, from the words, we recall meanings, related to reference which may be real things or unreal fictions. Bliss was particularly concerned with political propaganda, whose discourses would tend to contain words that correspond to unreal or ambiguous reference. The grammar of Bliss symbols is based on a certain interpretation of nature, dividing it into matter, energy, and human values. In an ordinary language, these would give place respectively to nouns, verbs, and adjectives. In Bliss symbols, they are marked respectively by a small square symbol, a small cone symbol, and a small V or inverted cone. These symbols may be placed above any other symbol, turning it respectively into a thing, an action, and an evaluation, the main manifestations of our world can be classified into matter, energy, and mind force. Matter is symbolized by a square to indicate that the structure of matter is not chaotic, the symbol for energy indicates, the primeval, first. Age, action of our planet, the throwing up of volcano cones, the symbol for human evaluation, suggests a cone standing on its point. A position which in physics is termed label, likely to fall, unstable. All words relating to things and actions refer to something real, which exists outside of our brain. But human evaluations, depend upon the mind of each individual. When a symbol is not marked by any of the three grammar symbols, it may refer to a non-material thing, a grammatical particle, etc. The symbol above represents the expression world language, which was a first tentative name for bliss symbols. It combines the symbol for writing tool or pen with the symbol for world, which in its turn combines ground or earth and its counterpart derivate sky. Thus the world would be seen as what is among the ground and the sky, and bliss symbols would be seen as the writing tool to express the world. This is clearly distinct from the symbol of language, which is a combination of mouth and ear. Thus natural languages are mainly oral, while bliss symbols is just a writing system dealing with semantics, not phonetics. The 900 individual symbols of the system are called bliss characters. These may be ideographic, representing abstract concepts, pictographic, a direct representation of objects or composite, in which two or more existing bliss characters have been superimposed to represent a new meaning. Size, orientation and, and relation to the skyline and earth line affects the meaning of each symbol. A single concept is called a bliss word, which can consist of one or more bliss characters. In the case of multiple character bliss words, the main character is called the classifier which indicates the semantic or grammatical category to which the bliss word belongs. To this can be added bliss characters as prefixes or suffixes called modifiers which amend the meaning of the first symbol. A further symbol, called an indicator can be added adjacent to the bliss word. These are used as grammatical and or semantic markers. This sentence means I want to go to the cinema. This example shows. Several features of bliss symbolics. Bliss symbolics was used in 1971 to help children at the Ontario Crippled Children's Centre in Toronto. Ontario, Canada. Since it was important that the children see consistent pictures, OCCC had a draftsman named Jim Grice draw the symbols. Both Charles K. Bliss and Margaret Beasley at the OCCC worked with Grice to ensure consistency. In 1975, a new organization named Bliss Symbolics Communication Foundation directed by Shirley McNaughton led this effort. Over the years, this organization changed its name to Bliss Symbolics Communication Institute, 
Easter Seal Communication Institute, and ultimately to Bliss Symbolics Communication International. BCI is an international group of people who act as an authority regarding the standardization of the Bliss Symbolics language. It has taken responsibility for any extensions of the Bliss Symbolics language as well as any maintenance needed for the language. BCI has coordinated usage of the language since 1971 for augmentative and alternative communication. BCI received the license and copyright through legal agreements with Charles K. Bliss in 1975 and 1982. Limiting the count of Bliss characters is very useful in order to help the user community. It also helps when implementing Bliss symbolics using technology such as computers. In 1991, BCI published a reference guide containing 2,300 vocabulary items and detailed rules for the graphic design of additional characters, so they settled a first set of approved Bliss words for general use. The Standards Council of Canada then sponsored, on January 21, 1993, the registration of an encoded character set for use in ISO-IEC 2022, in the ISO-IR International Registry of Coded Character Sets. After many years of requests, the Bliss Symbolic Language was finally approved as an encoded language, with code ZBL, into the ISO 639-2 and ISO 639-3 standards. A proposal was posted by Michael Everson for the Bliss Symbolic script to be included in the Universal Character Set and encoded for use with the ISO-IEC 10646 and Unicode standards. BCI would cooperate with the Unicode Technical Committee and the ISO Working Group. The proposed encoding does not use the lexical encoding model used in the existing ISO IR-169 registered character set, but instead applies the Unicode and ISO character glyph model to the Bliss character model already adopted by BCI. Since this would significantly reduce the number of needed characters. Bliss characters can now be used in a creative way to create many new arbitrary concepts, by surrounding the invented words with special Bliss indicators, something which was not possible in the ISO IR-169 encoding. However, at the end of 2009, the Bliss Symbolic script is still not encoded in the UCS. Some questions are still unanswered, such as the inclusion in the BCI repertoire of some characters that are already encoded in the UCS, but whose unification may cause problems due to the very strict graphical layouts required by the published Bliss reference guides. In addition, the character metrics use a specific layout where the usual baseline is not used, and the ideographic M square is not relevant for Bliss character designs, that use additional earth line and sky line to define the composition square. Some fonts supporting the BCI repertoire are available and usable with text encoded with private use assignments within the UCS. But only the private BCI encoding based on ISO IR-169 registration is available for text interchange. Thanks for watching.